All right, we're back. And of course, you know this is 30 Questions. This is where we get interactive with people that matter in society. We get in their minds, and then we'll also try to get to know what they're thinking at any point in time. My name is Kofi Ochami, and I'm always your host with the most. And today, I am playing host to one amazing artist this country can actually boast of in and out. His name is Walla. The cool ball law. I am it today. 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 Before we get into anything, the Kushka, what you do with it is amazing. Can, can you just show me something little on it? Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Um, that's music. Mm -hmm. You do this on stage? Yeah, it's my main instrument when I'm performing. It, it, it's it's weird that you pick this one as an instrument. Uh, it, it, it's not something that people really will, will take on stage and say, this is what I play. You know, in the late now dance hall, um, an African orchestra, and even now, some of the people in the Pan-African Youth Orchestra, mm -hmm. they use Kushka to direct, instead of the conductor where in the West mm -hmm. she didn't using like a stick, a mm -hmm. wand. Mm -hmm. They, in the African Pan-African Orchestra, they use Kushka to direct the orchestra. To let the people keep their timing mm -hmm. and yeah. all and of that. And signature and, you know. And Whoa, and so time signatures. Yeah. All right. Whoa. Yeah. You must be a master to, to be you, able to use it for that purpose. Yeah, ma me, sometimes... I feel like I'm good at it, but then if you watch how the Japanese people play, it's crazy. Japanese people play? They yeah, they call it asalato. Asalato? Yeah, in Japan and Asia. And they play it very crazy, but the build is different there. Mm. They build it different. Even this, I was going to talk about this build. This this is like a modernized, this is like AI Kushka. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> the original one will come from those small gods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but no, these are the gods inside. Oh, use electric tape on them so oh. it doesn't break easily. Oh, it lasts longer, and it well, well, because of the plastic on it, yeah. ah. it's less noisy. This one it controls the sound and oh, it makes it it warms it up a bit, mm. like killing the highs in the EQ. Okay, okay, because you are not too comfortable with the high. It's just sometimes if you are playing it too much, if you have the the naked ones and you are playing it. The naked Kushka balls, right? And you're just playing it anyhow. Mm. It's, it's quite So one of is a sound engineer. He's a music producer. He is a film director. He is a video maker. He is just like me in a lot of ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, when is the next film coming out? Cost of Money, What that, that was the first one you ever released. Yeah, Cost of Money is the first musical that yeah, um, we released that was me and Mensa with mm -hmm. Manji and King Lu, and we went and did part two as well. Mm -hmm. And we started writing part three just before COVID, mm -hmm. and since then it's kind of thrown off our rhythm. So we haven't really got back into you know a session to finish um, the the scripts and the to continue to shoot and to release. Hoping that by next summer we'll be we'll be working on it again. Beautiful. You 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 are notorious for album titles. How many albums do you credit right now? I can't wait. I mean my solo stuff, I think I have green card, yellow card, um brown card. Let red guess, card. Let me guess the next album title. White cards. <laughs> I think out the five I have out, those are the ones. Yeah, and the next one is yes, it blue card. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the blue card album. How many songs on that? Oh, I, it's going the blue card. I'm dividing it. Was going to be like 15 songs, but I'm dividing it into volume one and two, so it'll be seven songs, and I mm -hmm. think eight or so songs mm -hmm. on the on the other one. You know, we, we've had chats, but I've never really asked you what you call your kind of music. Um. It's true music, like music that comes true mm. to me. Because mm. 
True as in T R U E? Yeah. Okay. But for short, like I've shortened it. So when you see the label somewhere, it's T R U M U, True Mo. Mm. But it's True Music. And it is. Because true, that, doesn't that connote another thing called completely like. And it's, it's a plus, it's a plus for me. So. Anyway, you, yeah. I, I, because yeah. I've, I've been in America, I've, I've gone to the refrigerators in the supermarket. They have the milk. Right? Okay, so <laughs> so you can call your music Trumo, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because that, there's Trumo milk. Yes. Mm. And it's chocolate. <laughs> the color. The color. Oh, <laughs> the Trumo is chocolate milk. You haven't, that's the main one they are promoting. Oh, my. Yeah, no, but I'm sure you are also a victim of this or a beneficiary, is that when we're growing up, we were seen in cartoons like Bugs Bunny. You listen, you be hearing classical music. The yeah. baby on the radio, you are hearing like high lights or, in the, or the, by the street side. Maybe on the radio, you are hearing funk, soul. Mm. Then we started hearing hip hop. And I feel like we consumed so much reggae and we consumed so much of all of it that mm -hmm. we are able to do some of it to an extent. And whatever I feel you can do within your talent to an extent, that's your true, that's the truth to all the, that's you, what you should do and what you have been inspired or, yeah, to do, you know? So that's why I feel like it, it, that comes, you know, I lived in Texas for four years. Mm -hmm. So if I do a country song, I'm just being true yeah. to my truth. Yourself. You know? Yeah. So, so is, you, you actually churn out your music influences, what what you've been exposed to. Excited by. Like, yes, excited by. I feel thing. like it's different in from in this time or in a certain time to mm. release something you know different mm. like now maybe i listen to i'm a piano then i feel like i'll do a disco song mm. or mm. A country song, you know. sharp contrast yeah it is to <laughs> keep things interesting for i me. know yeah. i know yeah i mean keeping things interesting so the earlier you do but uh, did you change your mind on the shoes are you wearing shoes now because you you lost the locks so maybe the shoes no no i still have one lock the, that's that's just one yeah, by the way, you used to be locks. Yeah. <laughs> no, those locks, the first batch that I cut, I was hiding them, not hiding, I put them in a bag and kept them in our house in Ebri. Mm -hmm. And some people broke into the house and stole that. They stole, they stole your head. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't even be saying this because they can now know that I stole him <laughs> and go and use it to do something. Well, <laughs> but yeah, so since then, I just decided I'm going to keep one because it's also like a ghetto visa. When people in the ghetto see you with Rasta, mm. they, they trust you, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah, because you are fighting the same system that's mm. in oppressing them. That's how they see it. So this is to actually give you access to the ghetto? Yeah, this is just for people to, like, people to know that I'm not conforming. I'm still not conforming. It's done but one, I'm not, I don't feel like we've achieved the freedom and justice. That, that, okay. Uh, maybe if we achieve it, I'll do some Sakura or something and relax. I'm still fighting some. So you not conforming is actually selective. You you decided that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fight the system. Uh, I'm I'm just, adjust the system. You adjust. And you don't fight it. No, yeah, there's nothing. I, I'm just not trying to get into the LGBTQ and your stand on that because... You because they will come and arrest you. <laughs> <where they're mad laughs> <for talking laughs> <about it. laughs> because we are going to be there for long. Because I don't need to speak very passionately yeah, yeah. About, about that stuff. Welcome to 30 questions. I'm asking 30 of them. Mm -hmm. You cannot skip any one of the questions. I, I'm not looking for a yes or no. I, I, if you are elaborative, I really appreciate it. It makes the conversation interesting. And uh, if you feel like a question is too difficult, I can put it on ice for you. But you have to answer it. It's still from my top. Yes. Lay away. It, lay away, kind of. If you're ready to play, you say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. What are your weaknesses when it comes to women? Wow. Your first question. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the first, I mean, the first thing is the striker. Mm. Mm. The striker and the face. Mm. Mm. Then if I see inside their eyes that they are like mischievous, mm. they are not you, like, you can tell the person is mischievous, but yeah. yeah right? I mean, when you are there, like when you are sitting in a certain space and you are observing certain people, you, you, start, you see somebody first of all that is physically attractive. Then you start watching to observe what are they looking at in the room? What makes them smile? 
Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And you are observing what they are looking at, where their eyes are following. And you can use that to see kind of where their mind is, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so I just like that, the mischievousness. And I also, and especially mischievous, if it goes hand in hand with women that break, like, the rules that are set for women. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you can't wear this or you can't do this. This kind of thing. I like women who are stubborn. Women who are not conformed. Yes. I, because they inspire me. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Some I I remember And that is in your character trait. So it's yeah. natural that you be attracted. Yeah, I remember me. I was I was um in a situation with um a lady friend and she got pregnant and we got ourselves pregnant. I mean we see like she got pregnant by herself. One you said situation? Yeah, uh, situation. Like it's not a relationship. Yes. Yeah. But okay. right now, this is a situation. Yeah, a ship situated. <laughs> anyway, so um, I was fine. She wanted to have the baby. I was fine with that. But then she said, I have to wear trousers and shoes to go and greet her father. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I'm just like, there's no way. You have to be somebody else. Yes. You can't start our relationship like that, mm-hmm. you know? On a false note. But she was adamant. He said, at least, if not trousers and shoes, at least short and Charlie Wattie. And I said, no. And that does not happen. We terminated the whole situation. Mm. I said, when I said, how many Ghanaians have you dated? Oh, this <laughs> question. I don't know. <laughs> you, you get, you, you, I don't date. First of all, like. After I, saying, okay, let me, let me, now let me put it in a box. <laughs> How many Ghanaian women have you dated after you became famous? And I, you, you tell me you have to be, um, you have to be very specific because first of all, like, I don't see myself as dating. So unless you're asking about for Koi, for Koi direct. As in how many Ghanaian women you slept with? Is that w- what you want me to ask? And even that, sometimes you sleep with people where you don't touch them, they don't touch you. So the question is like, it wasn't written. The hell in the question. Stop playing around me with grammar. Listen. No, <laughs> <laughs> how many Ghanaian women have you supported support after you became famous? I I don't know. I've never really. I mean, I, we were talking body counts here, like yeah, but hmm. I mean, not that body count is like a this thing that I think about, but I really can't tell you. Hmm. Yeah, I can say it's in a few hundreds, but. It's not like other friends of mine. People are always there. You know, the one who interviewed yeah. Not your friend. No, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm an adventurous guy. Yeah, I can tell. I, I know you know a lot of celebrities. You you, you are the social type. Mm-hmm. One love is everywhere. Really? Mo- mostly? Or I like great? Yeah, I know. I, maybe I think social media makes it look like that, but mm-hmm. I'm really always in my room. And I've met a few like celebrities, but I'm I'm not too close with a lot of people. Uh, uh, amongst the people that you have met, who is the most problematic? Oh, the cele- yes, yeah, celebrity you know that is really problematic. Mm. The person is really a problem. I mean, I'll say like the only person that I feel could do better and have I've had an exchange with like on their social media page, not really in private, but like live on another, public space. Yeah, is um wow. And he's an artist that I really like look up to and respect, you know, but and wow, I think wow, 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 yeah, wow, okay. okay. But it's like in these recent times that, you know, like these members of parliament want to oppress the LGBTQ community, Kwao has written some statements supporting their actions you know and i feel like power is well traveled and i feel like he has been able to lift himself out of a certain poverty mm. you know even though there's still portals around and there's still bad hospital he still needs to travel to go and see nice things like a clean river and so on but i felt like Kwao has reached somewhere where he is he, he doesn't have to be hateful or angry about a certain person's lifestyle you know and so that's the kind of emotion I have now, mm. you know, um, towards him. But it's not something that is like a bee. Mm. 
you know and i feel it's problematic because he has to use that word i feel it's problematic because he's making a lot of people in ghana in the world feel like they are criminals or they are not human enough or something because a lot of i'm sure a lot of his fans are members of the lgbt community are could be see people you know and for him to approach this like that is is painful you know even recently somewhere like black rasta made a kind of turn around you know with the way he used to approach the topic he's beginning to realize the humanity which is necessary for us to deal with each other so yeah all right what is, what is this song i mean that you heard that you feel like the lyrics of this song is just stupid nobody should have recorded this song oh that's not me i, I don't uh, let me see what song one song i i do i love stupid songs so <laughs> what song when you heard it you were like god i know i love stupid songs but this is about stupid i i can deal with this one to somebody who won the year i was nominated that was 2008 for the best musical. song yeah the guy who won instead of me oh god i'm trying to remember i can't, Hello, what? I can't remember done. i thought the song was very stupid really it beats my smallest time and my concert that song which song is that maybe i need to go to the yeah, attack in 2008 single first oh i'll, I'll, I'll look now, i'll look it up that okay all right let me put it on I, i'll look at my phone and <laughs> It's going to take my back. Okay, whilst we're talking, you can still be looking. So, do you ever get angry? And how do you calm yourself when you get angry? I, when I'm angry, I don't calm myself. You allow yourself. Release everything there so that in the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm finished with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless it's a situation where maybe I'm riding a motorbike and I don't have to, then I think of what it, where I'm going or I think of something nice that I like or whatever. But. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, if it's a situation, I just go through the anger to deal with it. You know, I feel it. And, and whatever you're going to break, whatever you're going to do. I don't break things because I'm not like, I don't like wasting. So I'll do like press ups or squats or go and swim hard, swim hard. And there's what the water cries to be pain in the water. Like, yes, mm. but it's not often mm. because. I mean, I'm you control your temper. I live it. I live a chilled life right now. Yeah. You said right now. It ain't used to be like. No, 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 no. no I used to be hot. Mm. Popular nicknames from school. Now we know you as well. Oh, wow. Kubolo. But at, at this school, right? At this yeah. college. But just before at this school, I was in a school um, called Prize the King. And I did used to. I used to pay attention in class, but I always sit at the back of the class and be disturbing whilst I'm listening. But I'll be like pushing people, drawing <laughs> and private parts and showing it to people, just fooling around in the back of the class, right? And one day some teacher, I think it was Mr. Ketia Kwenu, she, she said, Hey, Osu Bosu, what were we talking about? You're not paying attention. Then I said, oh, something spooky. Mm -hmm. And it was a literature class talking about the phantom of the opera, something mm -hmm. like that. So the spooky was mm -hmm. an apt way because mm -hmm. most phantom is yeah. you right? But she didn't know the meaning of spooky. Yeah, so then she sent for the cane. But by the time the cane came to the class, all the students were saying, no, 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 he's correct, spooky. So then she left me, she didn't cane me. And that afternoon, I was walking out of the classroom to go and drink from the pipe, like break time. And all the classroom fighting. Now you got a new name. That was my first, <laughs> my first nickname. When I reached at this school, first time i was the first week charlie any for this season you know hey kneel down or maybe before complain hey come and first one mm. i do this mm. so some day i'd wrap towel maybe when i wrap towel do this i wrap it at my armpits when i'm going to a bath house so i think i have breast right mm. i mean i have flats but anyway so i'm walking and then some senior was sitting at the bar up at the night house looking down he looked at me and i said oh because do you remember what she the orphan, the job. Oh, yeah. Orphan. yeah, I know. The way they were sending me, I was just so mobile. Like, yeah, I mean, now you get you know, everybody's target. By the towel, to us, he said, Oh, she, another person to us, tiny, they called me Abina Felicia because of the way I wrapped the towel. So, those are my two names. Oh, she, like, one, 
Yeah. And I've learned Felicia. A night house for a few weeks to months. But the spooky came back. Oh. Yeah, because I performed Murder Was the Case by Snoop Dogg. In school. Yeah, as Komo's night, or the first night, entertainment night. Mm -hmm. That was performed Murder Was the Case. And a lot of people started calling me Snoopy, Snoopy, Snoopy. But when they heard about the spooky, you know, somehow mm -hmm. I did. I'm going to spook. So it was my name for a long time when I was rapping with Fifi Selat from TH for Quadges and mm -hmm. stuff. I was using some key at it. Oh, you guys were like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, dual? So the first person that taught me how like to write my own rap was a guy called Salim Hamad. He was in a group called Taboo. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of with native funk lords, funkadelic, those mm -hmm. kind of that mm -hmm. line. And that's the early stages of this whole movie. Rap, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so when I was in at this school, Salim was the one like helping me with the rapping, the rapping. Rapping by the same Salim that later became a videographer. No, no it's different. Okay, it's different. This Salim is the younger brother of Papa Lee. They were Formula One this time. Oh, okay. Court, okay. Where JD shot a lamp and that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, I started linking up with Fifi Seller. He was called Scooby Seller at the time. Scooby. Scooby. Yeah. And then we started like even bring dancing together. Oh, let's time actually. You could break. Yeah. You, you still can break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit is still there. All right, beautiful. Now, I'm looking at our education system in this country and which subjects do you think shouldn't be taught? It's a waste of time. I don't even remember the subject, but me, I remember the books. We had something called GAST. And the GAST was very thick and we had four of them. We had course, like core science, Physics, chemistry, mm -hmm. math, biology, or something. Mm -hmm. No, the sciences. Um, it's more about how we learn things. You know, like for me at that time, no, I didn't understand why. If we are learning biology about the heart, do we say okay, draw a diagram in the exam and write about the functions of the heart. Mm -hmm. Then they mark you for the diagram, mm -hmm. but you're not an artist. Mm -hmm. So it made me draw a box that mm -hmm. is the heart. But you know all the functions. And when you see the real one, you know what to do. Why are they marking you about how nice you have drawn the heart and colored it? Are we in the heart? You know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's the way we approach things. Of course, on top of that, our knowledge or our syllabus, syllabi need to be 75% Afrocentric. We need to study African history, like 25% African history, 25% African literature, 25% other African social studies, you know? Mm. And then the rest of the 25, the rest of the world. So that we are arrange you to be your self more, more, you know. More. And this formula has been laid out in a book by Ayikwe Ama okay. called Osiris Rising. Mm. If you get time, try and read that book. I, I love wow. It. And so, yeah, I just feel like most of the subjects need to become Afrocentric, you know, whatever they are as they are, they need to become more Afrocentric, you know, in their form, like they need to be reformed into something that is more... W would, you, would you touch on the language too when, when you say Afrocentric? Yes. Do you want science to be taught in, let's say, tree or airway or something like that? As much as possible. As much as, you know, we have people who know how to say these things or we have the information on how to say a lot of these things which of course, we used to say before, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure before we were doing chemistry and stuff in the colonial Ghana, we were pipetting and doing things, you know, we were confused and maybe just other civil, like mm -hmm. people out there were doing experiments, you know, and because we're doing brain surgery, we're doing heart surgery. If you go back into African history, yeah. you find out we're doing all these things. All these things. There are languages there. There's words for our various languages. Some have died with people who have gone. But I think as much as possible, it is good to um, bring it, bring a lot of things into our languages. You see how a lot of kids are struggling when you ask you, like they're from a part of Ghana that predominantly speaks a different language. Yeah. You know? And the person is trying to say something and they're suffering. Just they laughing. Meanwhile, they have knowledge of, of the thing. They, they can they tell can what is right. In the, whatever language, yeah. you know, they grew up speaking. So... Yeah, but also I believe in the dynamism of our, our existence. So that, a language is not being used to and it dies. is sad, but... I thought about it one time uh, and I was like, so if they were going to use tree, 
to teach science. What would they call virus? Call what? Virus in tree. I think one me. Then what would you all bad? And no, but it's not the same. There's um, there's an understanding. You know, remember I say I didn't want it, and mm. we are dealing with something as in that you can't see in the microscope, and I'm the bunny. You understand that? I'm a bunny. I'm a gem. You understand something <laughs> about it? And after and some time, we will be forming, reforming the language. Exactly, we will develop the language, and then when we call certain things, you know, this is what mm-hmm. the person is making the, reference. The dictionary will expand. Yes, because definitely. Pigeon is always expanding. Mm. So is English. English itself is a pigeon. Mm. So every year they are adding about fifty to hundred new words. With new words. Mm. You know, so long. Especially in modern times. I mean, with I miss all this social media craze. New words are created every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever thought a word like viral, yeah, will become so popular. Yeah. In the nineties, I never had viral. On fleek. You know what? The old fleek. Yeah. Mm. Fleek. Uh, Tell me one incident one love will never forget. Something you experienced mm. that you will never forget. It will stay with you forever and ever. I think it was, I mean, one of the most powerful things I saw was my first child being born. You'll never forget that one. Yeah. You were in the labor ward? No, I was in our bedroom. I was living early at the time and um, my partner wanted to have a home bed. So we had rented a hot tub where you have to keep it at a certain temperature and it was full with hot, hot, warm water. And she was sitting there to give birth. And then she said like she was kind of tired from the heat. So she wanted to take a break on the bed. And um, while she was taking a break on the bed, like she started having a very strong contraction. And you were watching? Yeah, yeah actually. So my hand was there. Waiting for the baby to... Yeah, but the first thing that fell in my hand was um, trumu milk. <laughs> for the baby. <laughs> Too much of this. <laughs> 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 the milk. We're we talking about it. came out. Yes, I caught some and kind of put it aside and I caught the baby. Really? But that's not why I'm remembering. No, it's just... I mean, when you see the stomach growing, and you see even the hands and the feet kicking and all, and it's still like feeling like no, you're imagining things, mm-hmm. right? Until it's coming out. Until the child is there like this, and then you start hearing the crying, you're like, hey, what is this? You know? You get to the light. Yeah. You did. So uh, it's, it's something that I'll forget, but I guess a lot of people who have been through the experience will not forget it. And yeah, it's interesting. I, I didn't have the nerve to actually look at it. Man. I saw the baby after the whole process. Oh. Yeah. That's why people pay money to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I didn't pay the money. I'm not interested. <laughs> Can't be a that. But you made that on the milk. <laughs> oh, man. That is one milk you can keep to yourself. <laughs> three, yeah, three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I was with this. Uh, you, you, you love to ride motorbike. Yeah. Uh, that's, you choose that. That's your means of transport. Yeah. Uh, have you had any near-death encounters riding a bike? Or if it's not even about the bike I in, your, in your life? Every single day in Ghana, I have a near-death. Like, <laughs> yeah. When I'm almost being crashed between two cars or something. Mm. Yeah, there's always something mm. going on. But I have fallen once coming down the Ibri Mountain. You see, the thing about motorcycle, do you ride? No. Okay, so there's something called opposite steering. So that's the name I've given it anyway. When you are in a curve, right, with a motorcycle, mm, you bend with it. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, so you bend with it. That's one. Depending on how much the velocity, or how the momentum you're moving with. But another thing is, if you want to go further into the bend where you are curving into, you have to turn your steering away. Mm. for the bike to drop more into that curve. Mm. If you turn like a driving steer, like mm. this way you want to move it through, you are like, turning like, You're the de- bike will start straightening up and go the other way. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you are not, you haven't been riding for a while and you haven't like memorized that, you know, as a reflex, like mm-hmm. a natural reflex, mm-hmm. that happened to me because I was daydreaming, coming down the mountain, thinking about something. When I woke up, I was in this curve. Then I was like, oh, let me turn more 
into the cave now, the bike started going straight now, entered some bush, some gutter. And lost your balance. Yeah, it was wild. I could have, yeah, but apart from that, I'm a pretty safe rider. People came to your aid? And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And they realized it was you. Oh, yeah, but well, accident is accident. Hmm. Yeah, I was bleeding, like my jaw was burst. I, I had, we had to hear my knee. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot. Body scratches. I wasn't wearing a shirt. Mm. So my whole body was scratched. Are you wearing helmet? Yes. Okay, that's same the situation. Yeah. And you are not scared to ride him again? Oh, no, no, no. Hey, I really, like, yeah, the risk is there, but weaving through traffic, dying over, we'll go dying over our police, police yeah. rough roads, the freedom. It's also like the, the ending, like the power as well. You are also addicted to that because you are, maybe you are in a place where when you want something done, things don't move the way they are. But when you just accelerate the bike, it just goes. It just goes. I'm saying? Yeah. So that's also kind of addictive. Mm. Yeah. What one thing makes you feel at home irrespective of where you are? You could be in a foreign land anywhere, but you still feel at home because you have access to that. Marijuana. Can we go to the next? We can go to the next <laughs> one. <laughs> you know I actually dance. I want to say you know I <laughs> I don't want he has been known. Why don't want? Yeah, I watch documentaries about it. Are you? <laughs> now I'm gonna have to keep my question because I was I was building new wine. <laughs> yeah, I watch a lot of documentaries on marijuana. It I makes you feel at home. I think it's a very. Are, are you a user? I I watch a lot of documentaries and <laughs> I have this ability to watch people smoking and also feel high. So I don't even actually have to smoke. Uh huh. I'm a mimic. I, I, I hear you can actually make tea out of it. You ever tasted the marijuana tea? Wheat tea. Head of wheat. Wheat tea, yeah. You actually, you should go on YouTube. Okay. And write, oh, we as in French, we, O U I T. Mm -hmm. And the artist's name is Fidi, F I D I, wheat tea. Check it out, really dope. Sling and dope video, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll look for that one as well. Two things I'm going to look yeah, it's for. Okay. Osiris Rising and the Wee Tea. That's a good combination. <laughs> yeah, the wind and the Osiris Rising. So I'm, going to, I'm going to really understand the later. The, the <laughs> uh, have you ever said no to sex? Yeah, I have. It was unfortunate lady. It was... <laughs> But it's also different types. It's like video sex, like video call. They are telling me I should touch my phone. And I'm like, Stop playing with me, man. You know, I'm just saying, that's my mom. <laughs> but also like, uh, physical sex. Yeah, it's like I have malaria. Some, you know, there are some people who are bad. Mm. And when they hear you are sick, like malaria, they want to take advantage of the hotness of your body to get more feelings. And they will still come and visit you. But you are not well. And naked you. Whilst you are sick and you can almost faint. They will they, 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 they come to naked you. Yes. Because you are weak. If you are near the president, let me move your shirt for you. It's very hot. You are sweating. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is let me put this in my mouth for you because I see that this you see then this is that mm. <laughs> your face. <laughs> I'm not <playing. laughs> No, I'll, but I have, I have. I I don't say it often, but when I do there's a good and that one time that you remember to make reference to, what was the reason? Sense. From the... What? <laughs> from, from the fucking... Let's be better at myself. Okay, what is the weirdest place you ever had sex? You know you... Hello. Hey, hello. <laughs> Oh, the, oh, the weirdness, you, you, under normal circumstances, you wouldn't even dare, but you did. The weirdest. Yeah. I mean, to be weird, to be the most, one of the most amazing places that has sex, there's a vortex mm -hmm. in the mountain in Arizona, like up, like, I don't know how many thousand feet up there. You climbed up there? Climbed there, 
and there's a vortex, like some kind of round hole where the wind like squeezed through the mountain and comes through, but making the sound like you can hear the sound. So loud wind. And we just go naked there. And I said, in this sound, it's like thousand wizards flying around. You say, woo, woo, we're there. Also. I was like, it was fun. <laughs> really? Yeah. After that, we balanced and we're doing it by a river. But the vortex place was wild. <laughs> and we're not scared. Oh, Charlie, you know, that's another thing. You know, in biology, at least the gas book teaches us that your brain, which you used to be scared, at the moment when you have a mission to accomplish, the brain no longer has that amount of blood. It needs to process your fear. Mm. So it flies away. You don't, you don't feel fear. An erection is stronger than a sword. Mm. I feel that. Like, That's quite profound. Yeah, because if you feel for someone, right, mm. and you want to go there, like, you can That's drive there all the night, and you don't care okay about <laughs> a bridge barrier. You don't care. Okay. It's happened to me before. She came to visit. I had to go see her off, and her hostel is in some bush. Confidently, I walked there, and then when I was coming back, Basically, <laughs> 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 a man has two braids here and down there, and the two cannot function at the same time. When here is working, here does it work? Yeah, I mean, that's also a bit scary to like stamp, stamp on because then we'll be given <laughs> permission to set something. You know, when we were growing up, we had a lot of games, the pinot nude, the, you know, by the fireside, listening to all these stories, games, ampe, all of that. You think, which, which, which ones do you think uh, the kids of today are really missing out on and you feel like it should be reintroduced, probably campaigned for? I feel any of the games like Chaskele, which I guess we kind of got some cricket which probably they got from something else mm. earlier with or maybe they got from us and developed yeah right but i feel like games where children had to run or any game where children have to interact physically get here to take care of your friend you see your friend off to their house all this but now everything is happening through the phone and i feel like i mean i guess it's a new world but it's also changing our bodies you know mm -hmm. because we are not having as much exercise as you so i feel like it's in our health yeah, 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 yeah i think i think it's it is um and so yeah most of these games you mentioned that would have to do with outside activity running around you know but you also have to understand like in those times it was more fun because in people's homes and around and between homes there wasn't as many buildings there wasn't as much concrete terrazzo there was more bushes more trees more trees so it was fresh air yeah F and dogs to ride in. Kuta, then cement, and the sun is there. But with less trees, because we have less trees, we are feeling the sun more. And very the, good. So people are preferring to stay inside on their phones and save money and buy a condition, you know? To kill themselves. To change their bodies. Yeah. I was wondering, isn't death final? for humans i me and personally i believe that that it, that it, that is it. it's like i feel like when we die it's just like a light bulb well that's how it. life is taken from you is is over yeah because i feel like everything we experience right is stored in the physical matter all our memories everything is they are not a spiritual memory they are it's physical you think physical so in the brain is dead would decompose yeah then nothing is holding those memories anymore so that is you this was into thinner yeah that's how i feel and you you are those memories yeah but you see then what we, we others may call eternal life or reincarnation let's take eternal life it could be that you possibly had offspring and people see you in the offspring. When they look at the offspring in the offspring movement, they can see you alive again. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And and as for reincarnation is when somebody else somewhere or 
some animal, somebody say, hey, this dog is behaving like that, my friend, that died. Mm. Something like that. Mm. They say that you've come back as a dog mm. or a cockroach or whatever, mm. right? I feel like those are just the people who are still living, trying to still connect to you. You see what I'm saying? But there's no Wi-Fi signal. Mm -hmm. But so you're just using their also memory in a limited way. You just hold on with you, you know? Have you seen this cartoon, Coco? Uh, she went to, is a Mexican... I think it's Pixar, but yeah, yeah, I think I think I've seen Maria Moore, Maria Moore, yeah. that that they would that yeah. sound yeah, yeah, yeah. That I haven't really watched the full movie. It's really nice. There's a second time somebody's telling it's me. It's really one. nice. I cried about six times. Watching Coco. It's wow. You you I, you cry at least four or five. So you cry. Me, there are movies that there are certain movies that won't that'll be cry. Like, it was going back to his mother's <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be there by myself who cried. The little of the life is no good for you. Oh, no, tell you, I don't want to say no. <laughs> that, that one. Kunku <laughs> back here. I, I, I don't want you to watch it. And then I don't want to say just, oh, you really are fighting you. <laughs> no, but Coco, the reason I bring it up is that in the one, some of the Mexican tradition, they say that when you pass, your picture is put in a family mantle, like a small altar. Mm -hmm. And everybody who remembers you keeps you should, alive. You should life in the next your life in the next realm. Mm -hmm. So it's like our collective memory, the network of Charlie you guy, this guy, and talking about the best, it keeps them alive. You know what I'm saying? In a spiritual it's, way. Mm -hmm. But not in a physicality like they are in a place. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And when all these people forget about you. That's when you really die. Yeah, you're dead. Because they know God in with the memory. You know? Mm. But that should not be scary. The reason it's scary to us is because of our ego. We feel like we are so important in this world. And not in the sense of, yeah, I have this. We feel like the whole universe revolves around us. But when we look at the universe and see how easily we work on ants and stuff, like you're just passing, you're not even intentionally looking, you step on an ant. Yeah. It's the same way the universe too crash you. And it's not a, like it's not an evil thing. It's just the universe unfolding, you know. So it's our ego that makes us feel like we have to come back and solve this after. So you, you, you do not you don't necessarily believe in the Christian concept of life you know, and death. The only way I believe, I I mean, I used to, but now is like I also believe in people's beliefs. Like, I feel like, okay, if you believe in that strong enough, mm. then I believe what you're saying, but I'm not going to apply it to myself mm. because I don't believe it directly. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Yeah. What you have to believe is things you're not sure about. That's the only time your belief comes to work, I, I, I get. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in your past, I'm going to bring this to a close. We've had some very good conversation, but what is one thing that you feel ashamed of. But have we done 30 questions? We have. The follow up questions I, I, I also counted as questions. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> no, I wasn't counting. I was just, I was just commenting yeah. on the fact that I think the time has flown. Mm. Um, ashamed of? From your past. You check, you're like, I did this, but today I'll not do it again. Lord, hell. Should I keep it on ice? Both. Seen. I'm sure it's there while I'm burying it. The time you and Meza went naked. Oh, no, no. Ah, that was one of my proud moments. Shit. You were the numbers I got. Oh, no. oh you are different. Seen. It's one of my proud moments. Yeah, no, I was my proudest moment because it was such a liberation for us. I know. We're feeling not too many people can dare that. Yeah, but you know, but, okay, not too many sane people can dare that. Okay, I like this. <laughs> I like this reframing. <laughs> yeah, seemed. Have you ever been depressed? Um, yeah, it's it, it happened. In Romania, in the winter, I was in my apartment for about a week. I hadn't gone anywhere. And anytime I look out the window, I just see snow. And I started thinking about that mm. and certain things that never really crossed my mind. Mm. 
And I was just like, wow, what is this? So I ran out, I went outside and did the tum tum, jogged into the gym, bought my brother's shoes, jogged to the gym, and went to workouts. Because I feel like I was lacking serotonin or something, you know? I had to like, I wasn't doing any activity. Whereas when I'm in Ghana, I'm going here, I'm moving up and down, I'm chatting with friends. Romania, Europe. The weather restricted you. Yeah, the weather, people, they are busy. Nobody really has time to hang out and chat, you know? So it's a different, and so it's, it made me feel a huge void. And I feel like, yeah, that was, but I'm, it's very hard for me to be in a, a lonely or sad mood. Mm-hmm. I'm always like, there's always have been kicking yourself around. Yeah, there's always Basically. like my favorite thing to do is to bath and lie down mm, naked. I mean, if it's hot, I'll lie down naked. But just bath, just be man, just lie down or lie down. Not feeling. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if it you just just be there and decide you lie down. I know. It's the way the world I'm moving. Yes, people who have that luxury. Tell it. I can love that good do that. Boy. I know. Finally, finally. A celebrity who is hitting on you. I don't want a name. I want you to describe the person. Hey, hey, hey. one kind of way. <laughs> No, no, at the moment, at the moment. No celebrity is hitting on you. Hating or hitting? Hitting. Like if he get you, he that he bring him body sorrow. And in this modern world, uh, uh, it could be a man or a woman. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, but not no one is coming to mind. And he was a man. I want to expose them in Ghana because maybe let's they themselves are out there. That's why I don't want you to mention names. Yeah, but I no at the moment I'm not. I don't think I'm in the eyes of any celebrity, or they haven't told me. Okay, so I, I'm going to strike that as an irrelevant question then. It doesn't apply at the moment. Okay, so finally, finally, how long have you gone without sex in your adult life? Is masturbation part of it? Let's end it here. <laughs> 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 masturbation has a, has a name on its own. And sex, or would you consider masturbation? Yeah, because you can take somebody... You got me thinking, you know. <laughs> no, you can take somebody's picture and be using your hand and looking at the picture and you feel like you're having some kind of... Intercourse with the person. Yeah, it's sexual. You holding your phone, the way you hold your phone no matter to check your message. Mm. That's not how you hold it. When you are masturbating. You hold it different. That's how you squeeze it for the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the Kubolo. The brand new album is what, Blue Card. You might want to just check it out. Immediately you hear the dates and uh, is it out already? No, Blue Card is coming out by the end of the year. I'm going to do a listening party. I don't have dates and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. So when it comes out, most definitely we'll pass the information yeah, here as well. Thank you for watching. My name is Kofi Ochami. We're always trying to bring you what is best. Stick and stay to 30 questions. I'll catch you next time.